Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to take this ugly looking slab and turn it into a table. Let's do it. So the first thing that I have to do is I have to create a jig. And I'm going to create a round table, so that's what you see me here doing is I'm creating a round template for my round table that I'll later use for uh, on my router bit. And so I don't have a, a bandsaw, so I just created a little jig on my table saw to create a round, create a round template, and that's what I'm doing here. If you've never done this before, it's kind of uh, dangerous, so I recommend taking off small pieces at a time like I'm doing here. And the end result is you get this round, perfectly round uh, template. The next thing that I need to do is knock off any bark that was left on the slab. I got this slab from a friend and uh, they were using it on their table and this is kind of a uh, scrap piece. So it had a bunch of bark on there. This is just me taking off the bark with a chisel. Uh, one, one smack at a time. So here's the fun part. I tried to do that same template process on this slab. This slab's about two, two and a half inches thick. And so I started taking off one pass, see if I could do this. It was very scary and right there, I had a little bit of kickback. So I changed it up after that and I decided I am not gonna do that. Of course I had to try it again, see if I could do it. Um, we'll see how it goes. So I started getting kicked back again and I decided right there, nope, this is not good. I'm not gonna do this process. So then I whipped out my router, made a little router template uh, jig and uh, started cutting out the circle one slow pass at a time. And this is definitely the way to do it. It's uh, a lot safer, a lot better. Uh, the only pro problem I had here was that my slab wanted to keep moving so I had to figure out a way to clamp it down. That's what I'm doing here, just clamping it, making sure I can actually do the work on it. Definitely have a vacuum hooked up because this makes a ton of sawdust. Here's a little bit of a different angle. Uh, I took my vacuum hose and clamped that down to my uh, jig there because I kept flying over everywhere. So uh, definitely got that out of the way to make it a lot easier and uh, not flying. So wrap those things down if you can. You don't want hoses flying everywhere. I got done with the router and I had these big chunks that I wanted to knock off so I actually took this back to the table saw to get these uh, these corners knocked off with the blade. See me lowering the blade there. It's best to take this off in two passes. I think I tried to do it in one pass but again it's just you know it's just being dumb and good chance for an accident to happen so so take this thick material do it in two passes if you can.
Let me knock it off another piece, uh, another corner piece. I'm trying to get as close to that circle as I can using the table saw. I love using the table saw. It's dangerous, but uh, it does work well. Once I had all those corners knocked off, I still had a little bit of cleanup work to do. You see that my router bed didn't go all the way through. Again, it's like a two and a half, maybe two inch thick piece of wood. So I had to go in with a flush trim bit and uh, see what else I could knock off here. So that's what I'm doing here. Okay, back to the template. So earlier in the video I created this, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, wrap this up with Tyvek tape. This is just from Lowe's, no sponsor. Um, and this is gonna prevent any epoxy from sticking to this wood. So that's what I'm doing here, is covering the entire template with Tyvek tape, or this Lowe's uh, home wrap tape. And then I'm gonna put the slab on top of that, and we're gonna do a uh, epoxy pour. So this is a um, landscaping material that I saw Blacktail Studio using on one of his round table builds. So I grabbed some of this from uh, Lowe's as well, and now I'm just caulking the edges, caulking wherever I uh, can to make sure that when I do my epoxy pour that no caulk can get out. However, I did have a pretty big leak. I didn't do a great job caulking the edges here. But uh, if you do use this material, just make sure you caulk on the outside and in the inside. I, I think why I had a leak was because I only did the inside here. Here's a pro tip. Uh, use one of those nuts, electrical nuts, to um, for your caulk. And this tool is really handy. Uh, I bought this tool on Amazon and it's, you can use it on all different kinds of settings and basically it just leaves a really nice uh, caulk line at the end so you don't have to use your finger. Before I put the slab in the mold, I'm letting the caulk kind of set up, and while that's setting up, I'm planing down um, my slab so I've got a nice flat surface on the bottom that I can put the slab down into. Okay, it's pouring time. So the first thing that I always do when I do a pour is I want to clamp that wood down. This is a pretty thick piece of wood, but wood floats. And if you've ever used epoxy, epoxy is very much like water. So I want to make sure this thing is not going to float. So I always try to clamp it down to the work surface or to the temple uh, table if I can. And that's what I'm doing here. I use liquid glass. This is a two to four inch uh, thick pour set. I highly recommend this stuff. It's great. I've used other products in the past, but I really enjoy uh, liquid glass. Always 
use gloves and eye protection as well. This stuff can be a mess. And so uh, just beware. After you get the part A and part B uh, poured in, um, it's good just to let it sit for a little bit. You can start mixing immediately, but you see those bubbles start coming up. It's good just to let those bubbles pop naturally. And here I am mixing it all together. The mix time I think is like three to five minutes, something like that. So you can just use your drill. I've got a nice uh, bit on there to help the process. Make sure you scrape the edges too. And I'm going to use a, a white color here. So I'm putting as much as I can in this mix because I want it to be very white at the end. All right, it's pork time, and uh, here it is, the final result of that, that mixture going in. So satisfying seeing that filling up. So you see it's kind of a pearly white there. I actually was surprised at how pearly it was. I really wanted a, a white color, but um, the person I built this for, they really enjoyed that color, so I'm, I'm glad that it worked out. And you see there's a, there's a lot of epoxy in this build. Doesn't look like it, but over a gallon, maybe even two gallons, I think. So off camera, I had uh, a spill. There was uh, an epoxy leak that I had to deal with. So that was fun. But here I am, uh, after cleaning up and getting everything back together, I'm popping this table off of that mold. There it is in the bottom of the table. You see it actually turned out really awesome. And that was really, the Tyvek tape right there really came in clutch because it just popped off that tape. Epoxy does not stick to Tyvek tape. And you see I actually uh, lost about oh, three quarters of an inch right there um, of epoxy. It was all over my table. It was a huge mess. So make sure you caulk and caulk again. Do not get spillage. So this is fun. Um, I needed a way to cut the remainder of that, that wood off. I didn't want to pour another pour of epoxy. I actually was out of epoxy at this time. And so I was okay with the thickness of, of the table, but I don't have a bandsaw and I can't run through the, uh, anything else. I don't have another tool to get this off, and I wanted to keep the material, so I could have taken my router sled and just kind of hogged material away, but I really wanted to use this material, so I created a little jig for the table to sit in, and then I got my chainsaw out. And this, this wood was very strong, and my... Uh, my chainsaw was kind of struggling there for a little bit getting through it all, but it was a fun little process and it worked. So now I'm using my uh, router again. I got my router sled hooked up and I'm just gonna make this surface as flat as I can using my router. And this is a great process if you've ever done one before. Melamine works really well for a, uh, a sled and it's very slick. So uh, that's what I did here. Short passes, works really well. 
creates a ton of dust. So you see I have my vacuum hooked up to it, but it's still not pulling all the dust that it can. And this is basically, at this point, I'm sanding. So uh, my router did a lot of the, the heavy lifting for me. Um, and I go always go through with the pencil, make some pencil marks on the wood that I'm sanding so I know what I'm sanding and how much I need to sand. And then I start going at it. I think I started with a 80 grit, worked my way up to 180 grit. So 80, 120, 180. Uh, I may have taken it up to 220, I can't remember. But that's my process. Mark it, sand it, uh, and then I'll rinse it down with some mineral spirits or some water to get it water pop and go do it again. As you can see by this point, all the pencil marks are basically gone and I kind of go back through one more pass just to confirm they're all gone. It's a great little process to, to show you what you need to sand and how much you've sanded. I also take a, uh, a tack cloth here and wipe the piece down. I have a basement shop so I don't like to spray my piece is because I will just throw dust in the air and this rag, this tack cloth, I mean it's awesome. It really pulls off a ton of dust as you can see there. I'm using a clean side, wiping it down. It had a ton of dust come off of that. Always got to feel your wood and make sure it feels right. I like to do a uh, mist the wood with some water to water pop it and then I'll wait for that to dry a little bit, take, uh, take a rag, wipe it down, you don't want too much water on there, just enough to pop the grain and you go back and sand it again, it'll make it really smooth that way. And I also like to, uh, to wipe my uh, wood down with some mineral spirits to get rid of any uh, residue, any sawdust that's still there. Here I am adding a round over to the tabletop. It's really coming together now. Here's the mineral spirits I was telling you about. This stuff is great. It's cheap. You can get it anywhere. Um, you can use it on any kind of project. It's a great overall cleaner. I love it. Something that I really like about uh, the mineral spirits process is you get a little preview of what the table is going to look like before you put finish on it. So this, cl this is cleans the wood, but it also gives you that preview. I think that's really nice about mineral spirits. After it's all dry, it's time to apply finish. And here I have Odie's oil. This is my go-to finish now. I really love it. It's super easy. Um, you just mix it up to the consistency of honey, and uh, then you are ready to apply it. And then you're basically done. I love Odie's oil. I love the smell of it, and it's all natural, so you don't even have to wear gloves when you're doing the finish. With Odie's oil, one thing that you do is you buff it on and then you buff it off. And here you saw that I put a little bit on the wood. I'm just taking an uh, applicator pad and buffing it on as much as I can into the wood and into the epoxy. And once the whole surface is buffed on, then I'll come back and I'll buff it off. Buff it on, buff it off.
after the entire table is uh, applied with finish, let that finish uh, kind of just uh, sit there for a little bit, I think 10 to 15 minutes, and then you want to wipe off any residue. So there's quite a bit of residue on there right now, but then you go back with the rag and you just buff it off. You buff it on, buff it off. That's It's that easy. Here's a final shot of the table. I loved how this turned out. It was a great build, a lot of experience. Thanks guys for watching and we'll see you next time.